We look at cases individually, we look at the evidence, make sure there is sufficient evidence for a prosecution and it's in the public interest and we do that to every case no matter who the potential defendant is or what the charges are, we apply the same test and that must be satisfied before we take them. I think we always look at cases to see, you know, are there any lessons we can learn, but the cases were properly brought and just because there's an acquittal doesn't mean to say that we shouldn't have brought a case. If we did that, we would be accused of being overly cautious and only ever take cases that juries will convict, that we think juries will convict on. And there we may lose cases that we would quite properly bring to court and should be bringing to court. And I think Savile was a bit of a watershed moment. It made us look again at the way in which we treated um, some victims of um, sexual abuse and particularly sort of sexual abuse had taken, taken place in the past. Um, and it really made us think again about our approach, but certainly taking prosecutions was not a knee-jerk reaction to Savile. We look at all cases in the same way, applying the code tests, no matter who the potential defendant is. Um, and we take cases for um, sexual abuse that's taken place some time ago in all sorts of cases, and we have some really good results and convictions that have taken place in these types of cases. Nobody's a scapegoat for anything. We will look at the case and decide whether there's sufficient evidence. If there is, um, then in these cases where there was sexual abuse taking place um, by people who were in positions of power and trust, um, then we will take that prosecution because it must be in the public interest to do so if there's sufficient evidence, but that's the key. We will not take cases and we decline cases, no matter who the defendant is as well, if we don't think there is sufficient evidence.